Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on OpenMP implementations in Fortran. Now, in today's tutorial, I'll be explaining you guys two directives which are which come quite handy and very useful. And these are called as single block, single directive and barrier directive. Essentially, what they name is as follows. Now, suppose you, if you're in a parallel regime, let's say, and uh, you're in a parallel regime and each regime is being done by all the threads. Now, what if I just want some section, uh, some section in the parallel regime that has to be done by only a single thread? No, I don't, know, I don't care which thread does it, but I just want only uh, one thread doing one particular thing, and that's it. Okay, and uh, for those kind of conditions, uh, the row MP single block, a uh, single directive is very helpful. What it does is that in the parallel regime, when, whenever you write an row MP single block. Okay, that particular region of the code will be executed by just a single thread. Okay, and all the other threads will will not do it. Okay, and uh, uh, dip, which thread will do the job? You never know. Based on the execution, whichever thread is available at that instant of uh, during execution, they'll do it. Other threads will just ignore it. Okay, and now let's look at that in a look at that with an example. What I have here is that is that the same coarse grain parallelism program which I've done some time ago, where we where we calculated the where we did the uh, you know the trigonometric identity sine square theta equals plus cos square theta equals one. Okay, I've taken that and I've taken the program and I slightly modified that. Okay, and this time I'm going to calculate the area of an integral. For instance, look. Uh, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, if I want to calculate the area of the integral, um, area of the integral, okay, between some angle zero and to between theta for sine for sine x dx. Now, if I go work out with the uh, normal mathematics, normal inter integral calculus, it will be minus cos x between zero and theta. And if I substitute the values, it's minus cos theta plus cos of zero. Since cos of zero is one, so I, what I get is one minus cos theta. Now. This is what this is what we do in a pure uh, analytical way. On the other hand, let's look. Uh, if I were to do this in the numerical way, what I can do is that what I can do is that uh, zero to theta. This is approximated to this entire thing. This is approximated to sine x dx, and this means sorry, this is equal to, and this can be approximated to summation of sin xi dx where i ranges from uh, 1 to n 1 to n so, uh, such that xi xi is an element between 0 less than or equal to x uh, and less than or equal to theta now if i define what, I, what I'm actually doing is if I suppose if I have a sine curve and with angles 0 to pi 0 to theta over here and I divide this into n, seg n segments then each of this n segments is actually your dx okay is that is actually your dx and then and then uh, what I have to do is that I just have to calculate the value of each of these individual division is actually your xi, xi, and then if I want to calc if I want to calculate the value of this integral numerically, okay, then what I have to do is that I just have to you know find the value of sine xi at each point and multiply this by dx, okay, and add them up, and if I do that, that if I do that, what happens is that you what you what happens is that this is your integral. Okay, this is just a simplified approximate simplified approximation for your integral. So what I have to do is you just have to calculate sine x i dx and add them all and then you get the integral. And let's see how this integral works out. Okay. Now uh, coming back to the program, okay, what I what I've done here is as follows. To do that, I define the number of threads to be four and it uh, defined a parameter m which is which defines the number of points I'm going to use. I define the di uh, and uh, okay. I, I guess for this variable you don't need okay for this program you don't need a so that it's you save the memory okay and uh, what you're going to do is that we uh, we are okay. I'm going to, I'm going to remove this as well because I'm not I'm not using a at all in this program okay. What I'm going to do I'm going to set the number of points to ten. Uh, 
a very high value here it is a hundred thousand setting the value of pi and these are the very uh, i trading i mean the indices for the, your i variable just like we did last time in the cost grain parallelism timing variables t1 t2 and ep okay and uh, index i for iteration and uh, dx x and l equals 90 for length parameters where l is the upper limit uh, so if I were to look at this problem, if I were to look at this code, let's if I, in the calculation, let's say, let's say if theta is 90 degrees, then it will then if, if theta is 90 degrees, then the integral of sine x dx between 0 and theta, 0 and 90 degrees is actually 1, because cos, cos 90 degrees is 0, so 1 minus 0 is 0, so 1 minus 0 is 0, so the area of the integral turns out to be perfect 1. Okay, now that we'll use that as a benchmark to uh, to see how our you know code works. Okay, so I've set L to be 90 degrees. Okay, and I've set some one and some two. These two are some some parameters which will we'll come across in a minute. Points per thread. Okay, now this is my integral. This is my interval. Interval. Now the angle, uh, the angle is going to range between zero zero to 90 degrees, which is in degree scale. Now. Uh, for calculating the uh, for calculating the trigonometric ratios, I need the angles in um, radian radian. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to divide the entire region uh, L okay into m minus one parts. So there are like if there are like uh, you know if there are like n parts over here. Each of this division is n minus one. Each the dx is like the uh, the total minus n minus 1 division so i'm dividing this by a minus 1 l divided by a minus 1 and this pi by 180 degrees is just for the degree to radian conversion so dx is l times pi uh, divided by 180 my times my minus 1 okay and ppt is actually the points per thread which we def which we looked at it last time okay and then in case we're running in parallel in, in case we're running in serial i set i start equals 1 to m so that uh, things go fine and I'm setting the value of sum 1 and sum 2 to be 0 I'm calling the, the number of threads over here using this OIMP set num threads okay so far so good okay this is the serial part and here comes the parallel part I set the ta I, I clock in the CPU timer over here okay and here comes the OIMP parallel block okay what I've done here is that in this parallel block I define all the variables to all the variables have to have no attribute no shared or private attribute and then what I'm doing here is that I'm getting I'm setting the I start I end and thread num I X and someone to be private okay these variables are I mean the th each thread will have uh, one two three four five six of these variables are uh, six uh, six individual copies of these variables so no problem with that okay and then uh, dx uh, I, I don't think i need a over here okay dx ppt and sum2 will be shared by all these variables because these variables are not going to be accessed by all the threads so uh, you can do that and now i uh, i'm using thread now to get the thread va thread value at, the, at any particular instant okay and with this thread now i set the value of starting i use a start point and the end point end point of for each thread uh, so that uh, in this do in this do loop what happens is that uh, each thread executes one particular fraction of the one particular uh, fragment of the fraction of the integral okay and now what happens here is that i'm calculating the value of x okay so if i multiply this entire dx by i minus 1 and i varies from 0, uh, zero uh, you know 1 to m what will happen is that it will cover all the angles from 0 to 90 degrees it will cover all the angles and now uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set sum 1 equals sum 1 plus sine of x dx so this is our uh, this is the integral part okay x varies from uh, you know x varies a lot so sum 1 plus sine x of dx uh, equals sum 1 make sure that we are adding up all the integrals for each section now if you look at it if, the, if you have four threads each of these four thre each of these threads will have their own copy of sum one okay now what we need to do is that uh, we need to add all these sum ones to some other thread to some other variable right so what we need is that we need uh, we need uh, we need to make sure these sums are added one after the other okay 